you doing? I'm your man, John Wilson. We got a good one for you today. We're gonna do module one, lesson one. The goals today are for you to understand how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide positive and negative numbers. After that, we're gonna rewrite decimals and fractions, and then you're gonna apply this to the real world. Let's get started. Okay, so we all know how to add and subtract positive and negative numbers, or at least we think we do. We know something like 5 plus 6 equals what? 11. 11. 11. Somebody says 9. But it's 11. Now, there's a lot of different ways to prove that. But what I want you guys to understand, very first and foremost thing that in pre-algebra, we stop really thinking of this as a plus sign. We stop thinking of this as a subtraction sign. This is indicating that the 6 is positive. Now what about the five? Is the five positive? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but how do you know? Because there's no negative sign in front of it. So technically, they have the exact same sign. Positive five, positive six. Now when we have the exact same sign, the rules for adding and subtracting positive integers is same sign, you just add the two numbers together and keep whatever sign they have. So do they both have a positive symbol in front of them, yes or no? Yes. yes. yes they do. So we're going to add them together, and we just keep the sign. So what's positive 5 and positive 6? When we combine them, it becomes positive 11. Thank you. So, lots of different ways you can prove that. I can prove that with the time-honored... Billy has five apples. One, two, three, four, five. Sam has six apples. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then something like how many apples do they all have together? Well, you count them all up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There's one way to do it. There's lots of different ways you can go back and check, and they work for all types of numbers, positive and negative. You can also use a number line. And this is where you guys are writing this in. So we could say that this is something like five. All right? So if this is a five, and we want to add six to it, our number line, when you're adding to it, when you're increasing it, which way do you move, to the right or the left? Right. right. To the right. So we start at five, and we're gonna move six spots to the right. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And we've gotta figure out what number that would be. So five, what's this? Six, six seven, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And that seems simple. You're probably looking at me like, is this it? Is that it? The reason I'm doing this is to show you guys that it doesn't matter if they're both positive, they're both negative, one's positive, one's negative, whatever. There's lots of different ways to prove number theory. This one's simple. We all know this. We all should know this from our first days stepping into a schoolroom. We start getting into now something like this, a negative nine and a negative two. And what I want you to understand is that the rules for this are the same. You look at this. You have two different numbers here. Do they have the same sign, yes or no? Yes. 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 What sign do they both have? Negative. Negative. So when we're adding or subtracting, in this case subtracting, same sign, you simply add the two numbers together, you keep the sign. So what sign do they both have? Negative. So my answer is going to be negative here. And if I add 9 and 2 together, what do I get? Negative. negative 11. How can I prove that? Well, I can go to the number line again. We start at what number? Nine. Negative 9. It doesn't matter where you do it, this is a blank number line. So let's say that this right here is negative 9. And I'm decreasing by 2. When I decrease on a number line, which way do I go? Left. Left. And since I'm decreasing by two, how many spots to the left am I going to move? Two. two. One. Two. So this is negative nine. If I'm going to the left, what's this going to be? Negative, negative ten. What's this going to be? Eleven. Negative eleven. So we prove that that is in fact negative eleven. And just make sure that your pencils are in your hands and that you're writing all this down. You should have both problems solved. You should have the number lines written in. You should be writing them down as I go. Sergio, what's up? Should I go right? I'm decreasing. We have a number line, right? Oh, so I if I move to the right, right? If I go this way, I'm increasing. If I move to the left, I'm decreasing. Because that's a negative, we're decreasing. So we move to the left. And you can repeat this process. If you find, now I don't want you to use number lines unless you have to. If you know how to do this and you're solid, you understand the concept, fine. Number lines are simply a way for you to check your work. Calculators are another way. Counters that we're going to use on the next slide are another way for you to check your work. Lots of different ways. Because in this class, there are times you can and cannot use a calculator, just like on your FSA. So you have to know how to do it both ways. You don't always want to rely on a piece of technology to give the answer. What you have up here 
is a million times more powerful than this will ever be, as long as you use it. All right, so next one, let's try my homie, Jason Francois. Negative three, negative seven. Smash them together, what do you get? Negative 10. Okay, it's negative 10, good job. Now how can we prove that? We can use the number line. We can use a lot of different things. If I wanna use the number line, well, I start anywhere. I'll just say that this is negative seven. If that's negative seven, then G club. I start at, sorry, negative three. I start at negative three. Mm -hmm. I'm subtracting seven from that. So which way am I gonna move, to the right or the left? Left. To the left, how many spots? Seven. Seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We'll try to figure out where we are. This is negative three and I move to the left. Where am I at now? Negative, negative four. What's this? Negative five. negative five. Everybody, I only hear a couple people. What's this? Negative six, negative seven, negative eight, negative nine, negative ten. I proved it. I'm at negative ten. There's lots of different ways to prove it. If you like the number lines and they work for you, use it. Something simple like this, you can probably do without a number line. You've been doing this forever. So, GYO, your ticket. Mr. Tucker, next one's pretty simple. What do you think? 11 plus 24. What do you got? 35. 35. I'm not going to do this one on the number line. I don't think we need to. But once again, you could always try this on the number line. You can start at one end and see if you can prove to yourself that that is in fact 35. Okay, so that was same sign. Add and keep. Different sign is a little different. When they have different signs, like this one, what invisible sign is next to this 5, guys? Positive. Positive. So you have a positive 5 and a negative 4. Once again, this problem is pretty straightforward. Straightforward, it's pretty easy. You've been doing something like this since elementary school. You have a positive 5. From that, you take away 4. What are you left with? 1. One. And you guys can think about it a lot of different ways. You can think about money. If you have $5 in your pocket, you go somewhere, you spend 4 bucks, how much you got? Uno. Uno. Same process. You could also do it on a number line. You can start with 5. If I'm decreasing, I'm taking away from it, which way am I moving? Left. To the left. One, two, three, four, and I end up at one. But what I want you to understand is that they're not all this easy. And the rule states that you keep the sign of the number with the larger absolute value. Who remembers absolute value? Me. A couple people, a couple people don't. Don't worry, <laughs> I got a plan for that. Absolute value simply means that's how far that number is away from zero. Absolute value will always be positive. So the absolute value of six is six. The absolute value of negative six is six. If we look at our example, we had five and negative four. So what's the absolute value of five? Five. five. What's the absolute value of negative four? Four. four? So which one of those numbers has the greater absolute value? Five. Five, which absolutely means that my answer is going to be positive. You're like, okay, Mr. Will, that's easy, man. We know that. But what about something like this right here? I have a positive three and a negative eight. Which one of these two numbers, Ariana, which one of these two numbers has a greater absolute value? Eight. eight. Negative eight has a greater absolute value, which means that before you ever do anything with this, you should know right off the bat that your answer is definitely going to be eight. negative. It's going to be a negative number. And there's a lot of different ways you can do it. You can use a number line. You can start right here at three. If we're taking away eight, which way am I moving, guys? To the left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then it's just up to you to figure out what number that is. Okay, so this is three. That means that this is gonna be two. This is one. This is zero. This is negative one. This is negative two. This is negative three. This is negative four. Negative five. Negative five. That's it. That's all you gotta do. I'm gonna show you something on the next page that's even easier. You can use counters. For small numbers like this, it's even easier than drawing out a whole number line. What's up? Oh, no. Okay, there we go. You take it. All right, let's try Pulito. Top right, you've got negative four plus seven. What do you think that is? Um, it's three. And we can prove that. We have two numbers here. Which one has the good or absolute value? Seven. 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 So I know my answer has to be positive. You can start at negative four, you move to the right seven spots, you end up with three. Perfect. Okay. Let's try Lexi. Madrano, where'd you go? Lexi, negative nine plus six. 
before you even get started with the problem, you look at it, bam, bam. You have a negative nine, positive six. Which one of those has a greater absolute value? Six. Greater absolute value? Nine. Let's just, let's check, let's just make sure. Okay, so we have negative nine, we have six. Absolute value brackets. Absolute value is always positive. What's the absolute value of negative nine? Nine. nine. What's the absolute value of six? Six. six. So which one has a greater absolute value? Nine. Not. Which means, guess what? My answer's gotta be negative. If the number line helps, do the number line. So we start here at negative nine, and then Lexi, which way are you gonna move? To the right. To the right. How many spots? Six. six. One, two, three, four, five, six. We go on and we check, negative nine, negative eight, negative seven, negative six, negative five, negative four, negative three. three. That makes sense, my answer has to be negative. That is a negative three. That's your answer. Any questions on how you would use number line? or how to use simple number theory to make sure you're getting the right answer. At the very least, you know that your answer is gonna have the right symbol, positive or negative. Then it's up to you to use different methods, such as a number line, a calculator, your brain, or counters, which we're gonna do next, to make sure that you're getting the correct integer, not just the correct sum. All right, let's try another way here. These are known as counters. You can draw them on your paper. They come in lots of different shapes and sizes. Here, I have a green plus, I have a red negative. We can use counters that's another way to help us figure out what the number is. And here's how you use counters. So I have a positive four, what invisible sign is here? Positive. positive three. So what I'm gonna do is for each number, I'm gonna grab that many counters. So I have a positive three, I'm gonna grab three pluses. And if you don't understand what I'm doing, I want you to realize that I'm taking the first number, positive three, that's three pluses, you get that? Yes. Sir. Okay, what number is this? Four. four. Positive four, one. Two, three, four. Now, all my counters are the same type. I have all positive. If I had a positive and a negative, as you're gonna see in a second, they would cancel out. But if they're all positive, you just count them up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. seven. Which means that my answer here is gonna be a positive seven. Count them up. This really comes in handy when we have a positive and a negative. Something like this right here. Okay, let's go to Autumn Davis, where you at? Autumn. The first number here is what? Negative. Negative four. So we're gonna grab four red counters. One, two, three, four. And we always stack them on top of each other. That represents my negative four. What's the other number? Positive six. Positive six. So we're gonna grab six, positive counters. And I'll show you how this works. How this is another way, without a calculator, you can check your work or you can make sure you get the right answer. Okay, so once you have all your counters, positives and negatives will cancel out. So, this negative and this positive, what's gonna happen to it? Cancels. Cancels. What happens to this one? Cancels. Cancels. You know what, let me use black here, because that way you can really see how it strikes it. Cancels out, cancels out, cancels out, cancels out. And what do you have left? Positive, positive two. two. Your answer here is going to be positive two. And that makes sense because lots of different things. I look here, I have two numbers. Which one of these has the greater absolute value? Six. Six. So my answer has to be positive. If you use the number line and you started at negative four and you moved one, two, three, four, five, six spots, this would be negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. Lots of different ways. Now, if you have questions on this, ask it, because this is, honestly, this is a tool that I see kids of mine still use in high school. When they can't use a calculator, it's something simple, quick, wait, wait, ah, I'm having a brain fart, something like that. Counters, and they go right to the counters, and it lets them identify that number. It works, I'm my OU ticket. Liana, I owe you a ticket. Oh, you have a question? Oh, okay. So, Liana, bottom left, we have negative three, negative two. So we'll start with the first number, Liana. Negative three, which counters am I grabbing? The negative one. The negative one. So how many of those am I grabbing? Three. Three. One, two, three. Okay, so the first number is done. What's the next number? Two. Negative two. So we grab two more red counters. Now, once again, if all your counters are the same, like here, all green, did anything cancel out here? No. These are all red. Is anything going to cancel out here? No. No, you just count them up. How many red counters do I have? Five. Five. And 
that means I have my answer is going to be negative five because I have eleven. Did anything cancel out here? No. So you don't cancel. Now the only time something cancels, Malik, is when you have a positive and a negative. Those cancel. See here, I have all these positives. Did anything cancel? See here, I have all these negatives. Does anything cancel? No, you just count them up. Okay, I got one, two, three, four, five negatives. So very easy. My answer is going to be negative five. It's a foolproof method for you to get the answer right 100% of the time. Do you want to do this when you have negative 112 minus 144? No. That's when you can check with a calculator. This is for small, quick numbers that you can do without a calculator. All right. Uh, Leona, owe you a ticket. Zoe, right next to her. Zoe, the next one. I have an invisible symbol in front of that eight. What is it? It's positive eight. Okay. So, I'm going to write it. And I'm going to grab counters. Which counters am I grabbing? Positive. Positive. How many? Eight. Eight. And I'll just draw them because that'll be quicker, honestly, right now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So I've represented the positive eight. Colton, who? Mm -hmm. What's the next number there? Negative nine. Negative nine. So what counter am I going to use? Negative. I'm going to use the negatives, the reds. How many of those do I need? Nine. Nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Can I cancel anything out here? Yes. Yes. Whenever I have a positive or negative, I cancel out. So we cancel, 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 cancel. What's left? Negative, negative one. one. So my answer, negative one. It makes it simple. It makes it easy. How can I prove that's correct? Absolute value. Which one of these has the greater absolute value? Nine. 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 So my answer is going to be negative. If I did a number line, I start at eight. I move to the left nine spots. Guess where I end up? Negative, negative one. Now, larger numbers like this, you can check yourself with a calculator. Anybody here think they can do this in their head without a calculator? And you didn't cheat? You didn't cheat. You didn't use a calculator when I wasn't looking. All right. So let's see uh, who I did not call on yet. Sergio, I don't think I called on you yet. Colton, I owe you a ticket. Pass it to Colton. Did I give you a ticket? Yes. Okay. Boom. And then, did I call on you already? Did I? No. No. Okay. So Sergio, right here. And then Miss Aiken, the other one. What do you got? Nine. Positive nine. Pause and think about this for a second because you're so close, but you miss one quick step. Negative Here's nine. Negative nine, but don't make that mistake because what if this was a quiz or a test? Positive, negative. You should have been real e it should have been real easy for you to zoom in on this and say, okay, positive 15, negative 24. Which one has a greater absolute value? 24. 24. So your answer absolutely, unconditionally, has to be negative. And then you got the nine part right. Oh boy. Miss Aiken, negative 38. Minus 99 is what? I can do this in my head. Uh, 51. It's not 51. Remember the rule. Same sign, add and keep. Negative. Do they have the same sign? Yes. So my answer is going to be negative. I keep the sign. Then you just add 38 and 99. So positive or negative? Negative. 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 Oh, because I thought you had the. the okay, yeah. Line. I just wanted to make sure. Negative 137, it's just that simple. Lots of different ways to deal with these. Any questions? No? Okay. So, four, three, two, one on this. It's simpler in my opinion. Multiplication, division, simple rules. But I need you to understand that there's a huge divide in rules. We use one set of rules for adding and subtracting positive and negative numbers. We use a different set when we multiply and divide. They are not interchangeable. Different things. Same sign, add and keep. Different signs, subtract. Here, when we deal with this, I think it's simpler. If both numbers have the same sign, your answer will be positive. If they have a different sign, your answer absolutely will be negative. That's absolute, 100% of the time. So we start off with something easy. Everyone should know their times tables. Everyone should be able to tell me that four times six is? 24. 24. They're both positive. They have the same sign. So that means that my answer is going to be positive. positive. So it's a positive 24. I like to get in the habit of writing that in my answer. It makes sense later on. OK, so that's good. Um, my L, where's my L? My L, what about 28 divided by 4? What do you think that is? 7, good job. Division, multiplication, interchangeable. If you know that four times seven is 28, 
it's easy to surmise that 28 divided by 4 equals 7. Okay, same sign. They both have the same sign. My answer is going to be positive. Yes? Um, bathroom's only for the whiteboards. That's the only time we can go. That's why he went. So next time there's a whiteboard, is it an emergency? No. Okay, so next time there's a whiteboard, as soon as you're done, you can go. That way we don't miss anything. Mini breaks, you got. Alright, so I think we have like two slides and then you'll be able to go off your whiteboard, okay? And okay, so same sign positive, same sign positive. They were all positive. These are both negative. So when I multiply them, I'm gonna get a negative, right? No, positive. Ah, why do you believe me? No, I said same sign, it has to be positive. They're both negative. When I multiply them, I'm gonna get a positive. positive. When you multiply two integers that have the same sign, or divide two integers that have the same sign, they're going to be positive. So negative 4 times negative 3 gives me a 12. positive 12. I do want to point out this little typo here. This is supposed to be a negative 2. I apologize for that. That was my fault. That's supposed to be a negative 2. I'm sorry. Um, Valentina, where you at? Valentina, what about negative 18 divided, divided by negative 2? What would that be? Um, it would be if that was a negative 3, but that's a negative 2. So, try it again. Quick mental oh, math. 9. nine. nine. Yeah. And is it going to be positive or negative? Positive. You sure? Are you positive? positive. All right. Yeah, good. All right. So, yeah, it's going to be a positive 9. Same sign when we're multiplying and dividing. You're going to have a positive answer. So, my answer is positive 9. Positive 12. Positive 24. Positive 7. Notice they all have the same sign. Guess what? Every single answer here is positive. Here, they all have different signs. Positive, negative, negative, positive, positive, negative, negative, positive. Every single one of these answers, as soon as I see they all have different signs, that means that every single one of these answers is going to be what? Negative. Negative. Every single one of these will be negative. Two different signs. Going to be negative. Two different signs. Going to be negative. Two different signs. It's going to be negative. Ha <laughs> ha. Two different signs, it's going to be negative. Are you positive it's going to be negative? Yeah. Yes, okay, good. Okay, so we know they're all going to be negative. Now, the question is, what answer do we get? We have 4 times negative 8. That's going to give me what? Negative 32. Okay. Easy, straightforward. Um, I'm already calling you. Adrian, did I call on you yet? No? All right, Adrian, negative 8 divided by 4. What's it going to be? Perfect. Negative 2. When we multiply and divide, different signs are negative. Thank you. Dante checks. Negative 3 times a positive 10. Negative 2. Whoa, negative 3. Negative 30. Different sign, negative. Bam! We got it. All right. I know, that's scary. All right. I'll wake you up in here. A divided by negative 2. Kian, either you or P, you can answer this. Tell me. What is 8 divided by negative 2? I'm confused of what to do there. Okay, not well, the other one, but um, when it's parentheses by the two. Well, the reason we do parentheses there is because it is good. Let me do it over here so the whole. The reason we do parentheses is because of this. This is a no-no in math world. You don't really ever want to have two symbols next to each other. You want them separated with parentheses. So don't let it throw you off. It simply means you have a positive 8 divided by a negative 2. Yeah, um, and that's going to give you negative 4. Negative 4. There you go. It's okay, just, I just need to clarify. Yeah, hey, man. That's what I like to see. Questions. You ask them. You get the answers. And you move on with your life. That's it. All right. So questions on this. Anyone? Simple, straightforward. OK. Other ways you can check. You can check with a calculator. Bigger numbers like this, unless you're some type of like mathematical genius, you probably are going to need a calculator. It should be a positive number if you do it correctly, because they have the same sign. Your multiplying should be positive. Positive 38,688. Who got that? 38,688. There you go. Boom. Boom. Calculator practice is important. I don't care what you say. You need to know how to do stuff. All right. Um, Hannah Albari. Do you know what 97 times 31 is? So negative 3 times 3,000 is 
2007? Can we verify that with the audience? Yes. Yes. Negative 2007? Yes. yes. First of all, they have different signs, so it should definitely be negative. And then if you multiply this, 3007. Did we all get that? Yes. Somebody get something different? Yeah. So what'd you get? 2407. Two thousand four hundred seven. Let's just do a quick calculator verification. Here's how you do it for the kids watching at home. We have 97. We're multiplying that times 31, but let's make it negative. Negative 3007. <laughs> it's okay. But it's okay if you did it by hand. Might just carry the number wrong. It happens, man. The best teacher is your last mistake. Because hopefully you learn and you don't make it again. All right. Now, the question, and I have somebody to take it. I'll hand it a ticket and then I give Camille. I gave you a ticket, Camille? Yeah. Okay. Okay. There you go. All right. So now, what happens if we keep on going? What happens if it's not just two numbers, but I have three or four? The rules continue on. And what does that mean? That simply means take two numbers at a time. Deal with these two numbers first. So these two numbers are both what? Negative. negative. If I multiply them, I should get what type of number? Positive. positive. Two times two, negative two times negative two gives me positive or positive four. four. So positive four. These are done. I will now multiply that by negative two, and that's going to give me positive. negative eight. Because two negatives make positive. And then that positive multiplied by a negative will give me a negative. Only deal with two numbers at a time. You multiply, got a positive. I take the last number here, multiply, that's a negative. Same rules apply to division. I work from left to right. I do 100 divided by 2. What's 100 divided by negative 2? So? Negative 50. Negative 50. Okay. So negative 50, those are done. Negative 50 is now going to be divided by a positive 5. What's that going to be? Negative 5. Negative 10. And I have one more number to go. I'm going to divide negative 10 by negative 2. And what's that give me, Mr. Francois? Positive 5. Two negatives make a positive. So you just have to realize that the rules continue on. You multiply two negatives, you get a positive. You multiply by another negative, then it's negative. The rules just continue on. It's not some crazy idea. That makes no sense. Good, good, good. All right, so two thirds of the way down. Four, three, two, one. So now we're actually moving into content of the book. Yes, it starts off with something just simple. Converting fractions into decimals and then turning decimals back into fractions. We start talking about the different families of numbers. Some of this stuff, in fact, most of this stuff, all of this stuff right here, is stuff you've done before. Do I expect you to remember all of that? No, because you had seven classes last year and the year before that, so that's 14 classes. Math was only two of them, which means that's just one seventh or about 14% of your time in school. So now I expect you to remember all this. But let's see what we do remember. All right, so I want to turn this into a decimal. I know some of you know what it is, but let's go through the process of how you do it. When we have decimals, there's two different types. There's terminating, which means they stop. And there's repeating, which means they go on and on and on and on forever and ever and ever. And we write repeating decimals at the end. We put a little line on top of it. Anybody know what that's called? Two words. Hangman. All right. Give me a letter. Anyway. It's in there because you know when you see it, like, ah, oh, man! Give me a letter. What was W? H. H. I. E. S. Y. L. O. U. Tattoo. Oh. Bar notation. Bar notation. Bar notation. When you see a repeating decimal like this, that little line on top of it is known as bar notation. This indicates that this goes on and on and on, on forever and never stops. Like 0 0.6 repeating, 0 0.375 repeating. There's a difference, that's repeating, that's terminating, it stops at the five. This means that it goes on and on forever and ever and ever. 375, 375, that's what that is. Anyway, back to this. Okay, so terminating decimal. We're gonna turn this into a fraction. You can do it on a calculator, but you need to know how to do it by hand. The way we do it is this. The number on the bottom 
goes outside, your little boxy box. Number on top goes inside, in case you forgot. Now, you ask yourself a question. Can four go into three? No. no. So we drop a zero. decimal and a zero. zero. You instantly bring your decimal up, and then you say, okay, can four go into 30? Yes. How many times? Seven. Seven. There we go. Brains are firing all cylinders. Seven times four is? 28. 28. That is subtraction. 30 minus 28 is? Two. Two. And four going to two. No. no. So we drop a zero, extend that out, we bring the zero down. That's 20. How many times is four going to 20? Five. Five. And that's how you do it. 0. 0.75. And it stops there because five times four is 20. We subtract, we get zero. When you hit the zero, you've stopped. Question? Lots of different ways you can do it. Lots of different ways. Now, I'm a big person of saying that you need to do whatever way works best for you. I will show you a way that works for every problem. But if you have a way that works for you, as long as it works on every single problem, that's fine. If it doesn't, make sure you come back to the light side. Stay away from the dark side. Okay. Anyway, so that's terminated. Let's see what happens when we have a repeating decimal. Something like two thirds. Um, let's go to, let's see, what were we going from a second ago? Maria, in Kong. Okay, so we're going to draw a little box. We want to turn this into a decimal. <laughs> what goes on the outside? The three. What goes on the inside? The two. Okay. Can three go into two? Yes. No, no. no three cannot go into two. But, however, can three go into 20? Yes. 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 So, extend it out. Drop a decimal, drop a zero. Maria, just Maria, only Maria. No one else besides Maria. How many times can three go into 20? Go through your time samples. Three times one is three. Three times two is six. Three times three is nine. Three times four is twelve. Three times five is fifteen. Three times six is eighteen. Three times seven is twenty-one. So six or seven? Six, because seven is too much. So it's six. We instantly bring our decimal up. There we go. What is six times three? Eighteen. Eighteen. So we'll do eighteen. Twenty minus eighteen is two. two. Can three go into two? No. Uh, I feel like we've been here before. So I write a zero, I bring it down. Wait, can three go to twenty? Yeah, yeah. How many times? Six. Six. Is this going to keep on happening over and over and over? Yes. Yeah. Six times three is 18, and it happens over and over and over. This is known as a repeating decimal. It will never terminate at zero. When you write this, you're not going to write 0. 0.66. You're going to write just this. Wherever, whatever repeated, that's what goes under the bar. The six is what's going to repeat forever and ever and ever and ever. So we're going to write 0. 0.6, or you could just write 0. 0.6. I like the zero. In bar notation, does it go over the zero? No. no. No, what's repeating? The six. So just over the six. And that's how you do it. So terminating and repeating, there is a difference. Those are proper fractions. Improper fractions are done the same way. Mr. Ostrich. All right, it's multi. Mr. Olmo. We have three over two. We have three over two. So, where'd you go? Where'd they go? Where'd they go? Yeah. Oh, good. You guys know where they are. I'm already losing my mind here. Okay. So, I am. Okay, Olmo, where you at? Where is it? Right there. Ostrich. Three over two. We want to turn that into a decimal. So, you draw a little box. What goes on the outside? Two. Two. What goes on the inside? Three. And two go to three? Yes. Yes. One times just the person I'm working with. Please. One times two is? Two. Two. Subtract it. One. Three minus two is one. Can two go, can two go to one? No. So we drop a decimal and a zero. zero. And we bring the zero down. Can two go to 10? Five times. Five times. Where did I make a mistake? The decimal Good job. 1.5. And it terminates because five times two is 10. 10 minus 10 is zero. So I end up with 1.5. Most of you know that just by looking at it, but you have to know how to do it. How do you take it? Now, five over three. Is that going to be terminating or repeating? What do you think? It's going to be repeating. Let's prove it. Mr. Francois, draw the box. What goes on the outside? Three. What goes on the inside? Five. And three going to five? Yes. How many times? One. One times three is? Three. 
Five minus three is? Two. Decimal, zero. Decimal, drop it down. 20. Did it go to 20? Six times. Six times three is? 18. Subtract, uh oh, I thought we've been here before. What's gonna happen with this six? It's gonna, it's gonna repeat, watch what happens. Three does not go into two. I do a zero, I bring it all the way down. We're doing it over and over and over again. So the thing is, I'm gonna stop once I realize that this is repeating. I'm not gonna do 1.66 bar notation. I'm gonna do one point what? Six. Six with the bar notation. And that little dot is nothing, let me get rid of it. 1.6 repeating, okay. So that's improper fractions. Mixed numbers, we've already done three fourths, haven't we? We've already done two thirds, haven't we? So mixed numbers, there's no real trick there. There's no real secret there. All you're doing is dealing with this. You're gonna turn this into a decimal. Three fourths as a decimal is what? 0.75. And all you're gonna do is once you figure out what that decimal is, just drop this down. So this becomes 5.75, that's it. And then, Manuel, yeah. what about three and two thirds? What does that become? Now, did we already do two thirds? Mm -hmm. What was two thirds? Or just point six repeating, right? Yeah. So we do point six repeating. What do I do with the three? Just drop it down right there on the other side of the decimal. Boom, that's it. So when you're dealing with mixed numbers, don't get all crazy. Don't worry about the Mixed number. Just deal with the fraction. The whole number just dropped down. Any questions on this? We got one slide to go. Okay, we're done. Any questions? No? You sure? Okay. All right. One slide to go. Now, this is converting decimals to fractions, which is actually super duper easy because the rules here are simple. How many of you remember your decimal places? Tenths, hundreds, thousands, right? So, once you get to the decimal, go to the right of it and get the tenths place. Then what comes after that? Then thousands and so on. So when you're converting a decimal into a fraction, you look at the last number in the decimal. In this case, there's only one. This five is in what place? Tenths. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take that five, don't worry about the dot, little decimal, don't worry about the zero, just write the five. And underneath it, what decimal place was this? Ten. So you just write a ten. That's it. Can you simplify 5 over 10 though? Yes, yeah. yes. To what? To 1 over 2. How do you get that? There's a long explanation. It talks about greatest common factors, blah, 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 blah. The greatest common factor of 5 and 10 being 5. And it becomes 1 over 2. What I really care about is that you know how to write that. Okay, so let's try somebody. I haven't called on yet. Let's see. Let's go to Miss Pratt. Where you at? Hi, Kayla. Hi. Kayla, so we don't care about this. We care about the last number in the decimal. What place is that? Uh, no, hundreds. hundreds, right here, hundreds. So you're gonna take 32 and you just put it over uh, a hundred. And then you ask yourself, can you simplify that, Kayla, yes or no? Here's a trick, I'm gonna tell you something. I want you to look at the top number. Is that an even number? Hundred, is that an even number? If they're both even, you can definitely simplify them by at least two. two. So you divide the top and the bottom by two. If we do that, we'll end up with 16 over 50. Now, are those both even numbers again? So we simplify them again, divide them both by two. What's 16 divided by two? Eight. Eight. What's 50 divided by two? 25. And this will simplify all the way down to eight over 25. Just that simple. Always make sure you simplify if possible, if you can, all right? And then the last one here, Mr. Crackle. In hood, thank you. In, last number in the decimal, what is it? What place is that? That's uh, thousands. Tens, hundreds, thousands. So you take 625 and you put it, remember there's no decimal here, just 625. You put it over, put it over thousands place, right? Tens, hundreds, and you put it over a thousand. And I won't make you do the whole simplification, but if you want to right now, you can simplify this by 125 and 125. Anybody? I gave you, I'm sorry. She's honest here. Promise to keep it. All right. You can simplify this down to anybody want to take a guess? No? Well, the greatest common factor of both of these is 125. 125 goes into this five times, goes into this eight times. This will simplify all the way down to five over eight. I don't care so much about the simplification. 
because you're not going to see a lot of big numbers, as long as you know that this starts off by turning into this. Are we agreeing? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. So that's terminating. See how it says terminating here? Repeating is even easier. It's even easier. You don't have to worry about what place it is. How many of you are able to, t how many numbers come after the decimal here? How many numbers come after the decimal here? Two. How many numbers come after the decimal here? Three. So here's what you know. Take the number, just the number. What number is that? Three. Three. If you see bar notation, you're not putting it over 10. That's repeating. This and this are not the same type of thing. That stops. This goes on and on forever and ever and ever. Underneath this, you're simply going to put, how many, how many numbers do you have after the decimal? One. one. You're going to put one nine. And how can I prove that? How can I prove that? I can simplify this down to one third. I can. I divide the top and the bottom by three and it becomes one third. Well, let me show you why. It's a trick for repeating decimals. How can I prove that it makes sense? Don't worry, I have a plan for that. Everybody already asks. Everybody asks. So I have 0.3 repeat. And I told you to take this and put a three. And underneath that you put a nine. nine. And then I told you that it simplified down to one third. So let's prove that this trick works. So we're going to turn this back into a decimal. decimal. Let's see. We should end up with this, right? Unless I'm just making this up? Yes. We should. So we have one third. What number goes inside the box? Three. One. What number goes on the outside? Three. three. Okay, so three going to one. No. So you drop a zero. decimal into zero. So three going to ten. Three times. Yes. Three. three times three is? Nine. nine. Ten minus nine is. Oh, nine. I feel like we've been here before, huh? Deja vu. Drop this, bring it down, and it's gonna go on and on and on. It's a trick to deal with repeating decimals. Does it work? Absolutely. Whenever you have a repeating decimal, you simply look. Okay, I have a repeating decimal. I have one number after the decimal, so I put the three over one nine. Here, how many numbers are after the decimal? Two. two. So what do you think is going underneath this? Two nines. Two nines. Ninety. Nine. And if you don't believe me. In your calculator, go ahead if you have it, do 57 divided by 99. Tell me what you get. You're going to get 0 .57, 0 .57, 0 .57, and the last digit is going to round up. You get it? The last digit rounds up, right? Something like that? To six. That just means it doesn't. Calculators don't understand repeating decimals. They don't. Not these calculators. So it's going to round up for you. But you should get 0 .57, 57, 57, 57, 57 till the end. The same thing's going to happen here. Watch this 0 .874. So I told you, you take this, you write 874. What's going underneath it? 999. Nine, nine, nine. For those of you with the calculator, try it. Tell me what you get. Do 874 divided by 999. Nine, nine. What are you going to get? 0. 0.874. 874. Yes. 874. 874. It works. All right. So now that we finished the repeating decimals, let's move on. 4, 3, 2, 1 on this.